The Education Department of Meghalaya, through the Directorate of School Education and Literacy, had organized an e-launch program of the 50 lower primary and upper primary schools in the state under the School Infrastructure Upgradation Project Phase 1. On the same day, the National Initiative for Proficiency in Reading with Understanding and Numeracy, or Nippon Meghalaya, was also launched. The chief guest on the occasion was Chief Minister of Meghalaya, Conrad K. Sangma, while others present included the Minister for Education, Lakman Rimbui, CNRD Minister, Hamilton Dolling, the Chief Secretary Government of Meghalaya, D.P. Walang, Principal Secretary, Shakil Ahmed, the Commissioner and Secretary of Education, B.D.R. Tiwari, Secretary of the Education Department and also Director of the School Education and Literacy Government of Meghalaya, Ambrose H. Marak, officials of the Education Department besides others. While it may be mentioned that the aim of Nippon, which was launched by the Ministry of Education, Government of India, under the aegis of the centrally sponsored scheme of Samagra Shiksha, is to ensure that every child attains foundational literacy and numeracy by the end of grade 3 by the year 2026-2027. The project aims to cover the learning needs of children between the ages of 3 to 9 years. And a program that has actually started in a very, very small way, but uh, the meaning behind it and the impact of it will be very big and uh, the programs to follow after that also are going to be very important game changers for the education sector. This entire thought process had started way back in 2019 when uh, we realized that uh, there was a huge deficit in the overall uh, infrastructure that was provided at the grassroots level for the students, especially in the rural areas. And of course, it doesn't require a scientist to really understand the entire process. But if you were to just look at and observe the kind of schools and buildings that are there, even while you're traveling on the road, uh, you will be able to understand the kind of challenges that are there in the education sector. And hence, when this entire problem came up in front of us. I requested uh, then Principal Secretary of Education, who is now the Chief Secretary, to give us a detailed presentation on how many schools really are there which require uh, improvement and uh, overall uh, infrastructure improvement and those schools that require uh, new buildings. And as soon as he brought the numbers in front of me and uh, the kind of challenge that was there, there was a silence in the room for almost about 10-15 minutes because we just didn't know whether this is real or unreal. And the kind of efforts that would be required to actually make a change was something that was just beyond our thought process at that moment. And we just couldn't digest the numbers that were coming in front of us. And even I got really confused at how we would move forward. But then we looked at the problem and we said, let's break it down. Let's try to create phases. Let us start somewhere. And I, and I tell, you know, our students are here. I want to share this very small experience with you. And I share this experience with a lot of youngsters. And I, and I tell them that, you know, I, whenever I get a chance, I, I normally, uh, earlier I used to do it a lot, but nowadays I don't because I don't get much time. But I, I used to always iron my own shirts. And I think uh, ironing a shirt, don't look at my shirt now and say it's iron or not. So I'm giving an example. When you iron your shirt, you see it's a it's something that's a, a lot of people think it's a simple process. But actually it's a, it's a problem solving process. And uh, when you look at the entire shirt crumpled up, you would think, you know, how am I going to wear this shirt? But then you start ironing the hand. Then you start ironing, you know, the sides, the front, 
the back. And before you know it, your entire ship is idle. I want to tell the students that in the future, wherever you are and whatever you do in life, there will be a lot of big problems that you will see. And the only way to resolve big problems is to break them down into small problems. Put them into achievable goals. Break them up into different categories. And then you will see that there is a solution coming out slowly and steadily. You may not be able to change everything in one go, but then you'll be able to slowly see the difference and that will give you the satisfaction and the motivation to keep doing it more and more. 